Welcome to The Skill Ranch. This podcast is designed to equip entrepreneurs, professionals, and consultants with skills to impact tomorrow's work environment. Now here's your host, Bilal. Hi, this is Bilal Vaseem and welcome to The Skill Ranch. On today's episode, I'm joined by Brittany Griswold from Women Conquering Consulting and my colleague Colin from 50,000 Foot. How are you both doing today? I'm doing very well, Bilal. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. How about you, Brittany? I'm doing really good. I hope that you are both doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today on the episode. And today we are going to discuss something very important in our professional, personal, and academic life that is importance of listening skill and how to become a better listener. So let's discuss the importance of listening. In your personal lives, Brittany and Colin, how have you both utilized listening as a skill to excel in your personal or professional lives? I, for me personally, um, it's important for many aspects of my life, like being a salon owner and being a hairstylist, like listening is a very important part of being a hairstylist. It's not just doing someone's hair, but also when you get into sales, you also want to be able to hear what your client is telling you because when you go through with that sale and be able to get the, the customer's business, oftentimes it's because you are listening to them and what they are wanting and what they're needing. And for me, Bilal, I find that in my history, listening was very important as I come from a television background. Uh, you're taught to, in an interview, listen to what your interviewee has to say and don't just follow your script. You want to play off of their history, off what excites them, and you really look for in the conversation those key points of interest when they perk up a little, when you can see a smile creep onto their face, when they really get excited about what they're talking about. And it's things like that that I, th I think have helped me throughout my career and in personal life really become a better listener. And I think that's something that when you're in discussion with people and you show that you care, that they can tell that you care just by the questions you're asking and by the way that you form the discussion. So uh, I think listening uh, and asking the right questions is part of that, but it's something that's really important in not just your day-to-day -day life, but your professional life. What are your thoughts on that, Bilal? And what do you think about the importance of listening? Thank you so much, Brittany and Colin. Yeah, I can share uh, my experience uh, in the coaching industry. And listening is, a, you can say, one of the most important part of the coaching process. Imagine you are working with a client and the client wants to develop a plan on which career path they wish to choose. And when they are sharing their story with you, I know both of you and all our audience, we have experiences in our past. And during that coaching process, if when the client is sharing something with us and we are relating back to our own experiences and interpreting their thoughts according to our experiences, that is what is called level one listening in the coaching industry. Although this type of a listening is very helpful in our day-to-day -day life, imagine you are going to buy a car. You need to listen and analyze all the features of that car Moreover, if you're going to buy a house, you need to see if all the utilities are available, what is the market value and what benefit will that house bring to you down the road. And then as we move on, there is another level of listing, which is called level two. Here, when you are working with the client uh, as a coach, you are not relating to your own experiences you are totally involved with your client. So if a client wants to develop a career plan, you would be asking which career path you want to follow. What are your potential professions you wish to follow? It could be marketing, it could be sales, anything. And moreover, you are analyzing their tone, their body language, where are they confident answering and what are their thoughts around it? So this becomes a level two listening and that is from where professional coaches operate. They operate between level two and level three. The level three of coaching is, is the most important part of the coaching industry 
because here not only you are listening to their message to their tone but you are also listening what they are passionate about let's take the example of marketing marketing can be digital it can be analytics it can be content let's say when you ask this question what specific type of marketing would you like to do and if you see where that person is passionate about that is from where you can get okay they want to do this and then you can further go deeply and create a plan for them how they can how they can perfectly follow through it and be successful in their in that career path and in this part of learning intuition also plays a major part you need to look for cues is there something that a person is not confident sharing and what might the reason be it could be a past failure it could be a past discouragement but maybe that learning experience might be beneficial for them in the future and that is where i feel that uh, listening really plays a very important part in the coaching industry and that's my thoughts around this Brittany and Colin so a very important part of listening is to understand or to respond but i also think there can be a bit of both when i worked at my previous job before i moved here to canada i worked in a sales position and oftentimes when we'd get a unhappy customer they didn't just want us to listen and understand they wanted a response as well they wanted to make sure that we understood why they were upset why they were not happy and respond in a way that they knew that they were being understood that you were having sympathy with what they were going through and oftentimes when you couldn't get them exactly what they wanted right away as long as you were listening and responding to them it, they oftentimes would feel better about going with a later date and having someone come to their house to fix something so i feel like listening to understand and listening to respond are both important but they are oftentimes just they can be just separate and people need to know when to judge those situations so are you listening to understand or are you listening to respond what are your thoughts colin and blah i completely agree with that there sometimes can be a mix of both and it really is situation to situation but you need to be ready to do both no matter what the person is talking to you about or whatever the discussion is uh, as as sales is a great prime example Brittany, you can be in a conversation that could be going very well and then they ask a curveball question and you got to be ready to respond right away or maybe you're in a uh you're in a tough situation and uh you're you're trying to interpret what they're saying to give them the right response but maybe you don't have the right response so you really have to listen to what that person is saying so that you can get them the right answer but uh it really is situation to situation and i think if you're always ready to respond that you can help somebody for example if uh you're talking to a friend who might not be doing very well as with covid going on i feel like this is a very relevant topic to be discussing as i've had a lot of conversation with uh friends who aren't as lucky as i am to uh be with somebody during this when when people i know who are alone and maybe stuck in a one bedroom in toronto or new york or wherever it may be i find that uh the people that I've been talking to, they may they might not necessarily want a response. They just want somebody who's open to listening to them. And it's not that they're asking you for the answers. They they don't want you to take action and and come visit them and break quarantine or or try and find the solution to their loneliness or whatever's uh, troubling them. Uh, but they just want somebody who's there to listen and who they can tell actually cares about what they have to say and is empathetic to what's going on so in cases like that you want to be ready to respond because if they're going to ask you what do you think or what what do you uh, have advice to help me out of this funk then you can but sometimes in those situations it's not necessarily response that they're looking for that they're just looking for somebody who's listening and and is obviously listening and caring 
So uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It is situational and you, you almost have to be ready for both no matter what, but uh, you're not always doing both as responding or just listening. Sometimes it, it just is one of them. Uh, what, do, what do you think on this, Bilal? Thank you so much, Colin and Brittany. I would take the example of a picture that uh, I think so both of you would have come across as well. That a person is standing uh, in front of that picture and the person is standing behind that picture. One person sees that number as six and the other person sees that number as nine. And they both argue on that, that it is six or it is a nine. And these kind of things do happen in all of our, like our lives as well. And what happens sometimes that one hour down the road, three hours down the road, and you finally realize that both of us had the same thought, but we were just presenting them in a different manner. So what has just happened? We have wasted a valuable time that could have been utilized in doing something productive, but rather we spend that time arguing. So I feel like listening to understand like you have the right to respond at all times, but if you can just have a basic understanding just to see where that person is coming from, will help us to create a better response. And especially during negotiations, it would come to, a, to an agreement more quickly if we are able to understand the parties and then try to respond to that. And taking the example of uh, of university cities like cities such as Montreal or uh, Philadelphia or New York, California, Vancouver, all of those areas have a lot of universities. Due to that, you get a diverse background of students studying together. And when you have such diverse cultural backgrounds, languages, it becomes even more important to understand the point of view of each other and then respond and that will help us in our like academic life, it will help us in our professional life to understand each other, collaborate together and make a successful ending for all of us. So we've touched on it briefly uh, from our past experiences from uh, sales to what we're doing now from coaching. Uh, I wanna kind of open it up to uh, you Brittany and Bilal where do you think that we can utilize listening and where is it best utilized? So for me, I best utilized it not only in sales, but also in the salon. Oftentimes my clients would come in and they would just talk to me and tell me about their lives, like all of their little dirty little secrets and like a therapist. And they would sometimes just come in for just a blow dry, just to have someone listen to them. Because a hairstylist, like, you know, we give little bits of advice, but we don't ever go out and fix our clients' problems. So we always listen to them, and they, it's therapy for them. It's relaxing, and oftentimes, you know, we're the person they trust most with anything that they tell us. And we also have to keep that trust with them. Like, for example, when... We ha we're trained to have be aware when our clients are possibly being physically abused at home. We can't just run out to the police and say this person's being abused. We have to let them have faith and maybe one day that we can help them, but just be there for them, let listen to them and let them open up in their time because running out and trying to fix their problems isn't going to make them better as a person. And oftentimes like in the professional world, we need to, to let people try and fix things themselves, but we do need to listen to them as well and let them kind of be a sounding board for them to figure it out. And that's how I have utilized my skills over the years. Thank you for that, Brittany. I can share my story of uh, selecting the career, uh, which profession should I follow? So during that time, uh, I did go and talk to successful individual within my family and other other family friends and learn about different career about engineering about business about medical about arts and etc and by 
asking them the key question and listening to understand i wasn't like kind of respond and give me my, give my thoughts around it i just wanted to know what are their opinions and how it helped me was that i was able to know which career has what benefits and what kind of a career i can create uh, around it so all the news that we get around social media or people of our own age group has a limit to that but when we talk to really senior individual it helps us to really know what the future looks like in a certain industry and that helps us to make a better informed decision other than that if we take our academic life talking with our colleagues university life can be tough for many people and like if you're really listening emotionally connecting with someone you can help them overcome their problems it can be around financial it can be around personal issues and that way when you listen you are having a meaningful conversation with them and at the end of the day you're making their lives better so that is what my thoughts around it uh, what was your experience colin thank you for that Bill. i i really appreciate that and that's kind of what i was i, I was going to touch on a little bit as well with my personal life and how it helped me and Brittany, i completely understand what it's the same thing when you go to the barber shop and you just kind of talk the whole time it's it's like a release of somebody that you know isn't going to necessarily isn't going to spread it around but they are doing you a service that something about getting your hair cut it, it feels personal so you can open up to them a bit more and I feel like a lot of people can understand that and Bilal with you going to family to look for uh, advice and listen to where your career path is going to go I find 90% of people are probably going to go to their family before they choose what career they want to go into and where I was going to to touch on this where we can utilize it, it kind of mixes in with both through career and learning I've found that listening, it was a struggle coming out of school as I find a lot of us when we're in school, it can be really in one ear out the other. And it doesn't lead you up for the workplace when you're sitting there learning how to do your job. Or for my example, uh, coming out of college, uh, I moved out west and was a farmer for a year it was something I had never done to that extent. I had never driven combine or transport trucks or uh, heavy dump trucks like you kind of see on uh, Discovery Channel. It was a whole new world and a lot of these machines could have easily killed me. So when I was learning, uh, going from when you're in school and you're maybe sitting in math class or you're in English class and you're just kind of going through the motions, uh, when you go into the workplace, you have to switch the way that you listen. You're not just listening to hear what information might be on a test. You have to pull in everything and really absorb the information because any bit of it could be vital to the job at hand. And of course, you're still going to learn some things that are very obvious or maybe might seem unnecessary, but listening to all of it then you get a full understanding of what the job entails, what you have to do and what might save your life or if something might happen. And that really changed my way of thinking of learning that before uh, it might've seemed very, you're just learning this to learn this. But even if you're just learning it to learn it, there is still something behind everything. And that goes back to the listening uh, to just listen or listen to respond you always need to be ready for both. And that goes the same for if you're doing sales and a consultant comes to you and says, hey, I'm really struggling in this field and I'm looking for opportunities, or do you have any connections that might be able to send me in the right path? And you get that question and you might just think, okay, let's just look for somebody in the field. But it can be more than that if you're really looking to answer that question and, and listen to what they said if they're looking for help look for people not just in that field not just in general look for people who can actually help them or people who might have had similar struggles that they can 
from experience help that consultant out. So I found throughout my different career paths and through uh, schooling and uh, through college and all my other extended learning I've done, you really learn how to listen in regards to what information you want to pick out. And that helps you in any workplace that helps you in personal life. And to go back to what I said earlier, especially during COVID and with everything going on, you can take all of these to not just, not just listen, to listen and really understand and possibly help the people you're listening to through better understanding and just through multiple conversations with different people in different industries and uh, something that we've been lucky here at 50,000 foot to just talk to consultants over all industry that you get a broader range of understanding and it helps you listen better and pick up things depending on conversation to conversation. So, uh, so many different ways, uh, you both gave great examples, um, but there's so many ways that you can put listening and really understanding uh, your conversations into your daily life and the workplace. Thank you, Colin. So I would share a quote from Agatha Christie that an appreciative listener is always stimulating. Imagine being you are you are down because of something, you're emotionally worried about something or you have a problem that you would like to share. Sometimes when we are in that kind of a scenario, all we want is that someone listen to us, someone acknowledge our problem. We are not looking for a solution. We are just looking for an outlet from where we can let whatever those negative thoughts, thought worries that we have in our mind to share with someone. And a listener who acknowledges, who is actively involved in the process, not like someone who's looking at, at, at their watch or they have to leave soon, but someone who is there totally involved in the process, giving the time, can really help someone overcome their problems. And especially during the current scenario with people being in lockdown in certain areas for the past three to four months, it is very important that we reach out to our friends, to our family member and have a conversation with them. Try to understand what they are going through and it will really help them overcome their problems. Thank you so much for that, Brittany. What are your thoughts around that? I would like to share a quote from Susan Cain, quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. We have two ears and one mouth. We should use them proportionally. And I really like this quote because it's true. We should make sure we're listening, but also responding to the people that do need to hear your words and advice. What about you, Colin? That, that's an excellent quote, and I'm going to follow it up with one of my own, uh, not of my own, but from uh, Stephen R. Covey, uh, and it, I feel like it's relevant to what we've been discussing and kind of what we want to change with everyone going forward after this discussion. Uh, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply, and that kind of goes back to what we've all talked about, that workplace or personal life uh, you want to listen with the intent to reply, but you mainly want to understand the topic at hand, what the person is reaching out to you for, is why they decided to come talk to you, or why you're talking to them. You don't want to just instantly have the next sentence in your head that you're going to say to them. You want to really absorb the information that they're giving to you, and not necessarily reply but uh, just listen. And I think that's something a lot of people uh, need to hear and, and really need to think about going forward. Thank you so much, Brittany and Colin, for joining me today on an episode around listening skills. So thank you, everyone. And I'm looking forward to having you all on the next episode of Skill Ranch Podcast.